Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. The Knife Raven here, back again with another video. And in today's video, following up with the theme of yesterday's friction folder from Turkey, today I will be taking a look at one of the oldest and most well known friction folder designs the Higonokami. Now, the Higonokami, as many of you may know, originated in Japan in around the year 1894. And the original maker, who started the brand, which is now known today as Nagao, Nagao, Higonokami, I'm probably mispronouncing that, you may correct me in the comments, he invented this knife as a everyday carry utilitarian pocket knife, and an alternative to the Kiridashi, which is another old Japanese model of everyday carry knife. However, unlike the Kiridashi, which we know as a fixed blade, the Higo no Kami was intended to be a folding knife. And it was invented very close to around the Openel, which is a famous French friction folder. And it became very popular. It first saw use among just average citizens and was eventually adapted as a school essential for sharpening your, your pencils and, of course, any other task a knife could be used for, such as trimming a thread off of a coat and such like, opening a package. You, you get the picture. But nonetheless, this became very popular as an everyday carry knife for just the average individual. They were very inexpensive and very simple, so anyone could use them, and anyone could afford them. And they remain that way even today. I believe five generations have passed through the, the Higo no Kami brand, and... While some have tried to mimic the style, the only true Higo no Kami knives are made by uh, Nageo Higo no Kami. And that is where this knife comes from. And these are made, as they always have been, in Japan. And this particular model is the small size. I had the choice between small, medium, and large. And again, with a lot of knives... I purchased this at Kent of Inglewood, also known as Knifeware. And the model I selected here, the small model, was the most inexpensive, coming in at 22 Canadian dollars. Shipping is free over 60 in Canada. And they do have some in-store, in-person locations if you are in the area. So you can skip the shipping cost, and go in and buy one yourself. The steel on this knife is SK5 carbon steel, which is a startlingly hard steel with fair edge retention. It sharpens up very, very, very swiftly, and unfortunately, due to being a carbon steel, it does not have good corrosion resistance. So you will have to take care of it, keep it oiled, and sharpen it every now and then, but as long as you know how to sharpen and oil your knives, you should have absolutely no problem with this. The extended tang, which is part of the blade, allows for the knife to be opened, and if you've owned these knives for any amount of time at all, you can easily open them one-handed. I have seen some very rare examples where the blades are very, very stiff and cannot be opened one-handed, but most Higos are fairly smooth and can be opened quite easily. The handle is made of a black carbon steel. Very nice color, very simple. It blends well with the blade. However, the downside of a handle such as this is if it is made of carbon steel, can already see there is some patina forming around simply by holding the knife. You can see how that is starting to occur. And this does mean 
you don't only have to oil the blade, you have to oil the entire handle too. And as much as I enjoy these knives, you will have to be very careful because they rust so very easily. And unlike the Openel, which again is kind of my gold standard for inexpensive friction folders, while you can buy them with stainless steel, such as this one, the carbon bladed variants, the only bit of carbon steel that you have to worry about is the blade. And as long as you keep the blade well oiled, you have no other issues. The handle, of course, isn't going to rust. It's, it's a wooden handle. And the locking ring is stainless steel, so it won't rust either. So these are easier to take care of. And I know people talk about the swelling in the handle, but overall, this is a lower maintenance knife than the Higo. But even so, I like the style of the Higo. And my thoughts on it have been mixed in the past because... I only ever had one Higo up until this point, which I shall show you now. Some of my very OG viewers will remember this knife. This is my little Higo SK-1 folder. Again, you can see that patinaed carbon steel. There has been some rust on this in the past I've had to remove. There had been some tarnish on the brass that I also had to get rid of. But again, you've got that extended tang with the little tiny blade. This one, of course, is in brass, as opposed to the steel. And it is far, far, far smaller. But these are made by the same maker, and are both very inexpensive. And they both feature the same shapes, styles, and blade steels. But it was a little hard for me to formulate my opinions on this particular knife when, as you can see, this is more of a novelty or a keychain than anything else. But over time, I kind of used this in place of my OpenL number no. 2, and I grew to like it quite a bit. And I still do. Uh, but I kind of figured it's about time that I get myself a, you know, more reasonable sized version. And even this is small compared to the medium and large models. But comparing it to a couple other friction folders, for example, my Turkish folder, you can see it's within the same ballpark. Or, again, with an open L number 8, because I don't have a number 6 with me at the moment. It's quite a bit smaller. However, compared to the knife I have on me in my pocket right now, which is the Rough Rider Reserve Quill Cliff, you can see these are very close in overall size, although the quill cliff is far thicker. So again, this is a traditional style. It has been around for well over 100 years, and it has stood the test of time. They're still making them in Japan. And I have to say the price to quality ratio is unbeatable. And when I say unbeatable, I mean within the OpenL ballpark. I still prefer OpenL, and you will probably get tired of hearing that if you're new to my channel. I am very much an OpenL fanboy, and I will die an OpenL fanboy. And I still have to say that $22 for a handmade knife is still very, very respectable. That is, that is a good price that almost anyone can afford and as long as you don't completely disregard your knife and refuse to oil it, it should last you an incredibly long time. And, yeah, if, if you like the style, I can absolutely see... I can absolutely see getting one of these. Again, very simple, very plain, but you can go with brass if you want something a bit nicer. They offer wood models with VG10 steel. It's their new line, I believe. But this is their basic model, their cheapest model. Again, you have a Scandi hollow grind here. You know, very deep grind there. The top of the edge is a little on the thick side, but it converges to a very, very, very thin, fine edge. Which again, I'm going to be out of arm hair at this rate, but you can see, oh, pardon me, this is... Razor sharp, brand new, 
They certainly do not send them dull. And this is immediately using, this is, this is user ready upon purchase. But yeah, absolutely respectable edge. And the blade shape is a little on the confusing side to name via our Western blade terms, such as clip point, spear point, ram foot, worn cliff. If I was going to give it a name for our, as I said, our Western uh, slip joints that we often use as our main comparison, I'd probably compare this closely to a sheep foot. But if you're going by the proper term, this is a reverse tonto. And of course, the tonto is a Japanese knife. And technically, it's also a short sword, depending on who you ask, but that's a whole other debate for another time. But, yeah, reverse Tonto. Very interesting little blade shape. Again, works well with the style. You can look at this and immediately know, okay, that, that's presumably a Japanese knife. And I always like it when a knife just radiates the culture behind it. For example, a blade that gives off an immensely artistic style or very skinny blade almost daggery my first thought is either a navaja or a stiletto so italy or spain and if i see something with excess guillochage polished blades and embellished bolsters i'll think france if i see something rugged traditional and outdoorsy i'll say usa something that looks like a camp tool or a viking a viking implement then i'd say norway so when i see a blade that invokes the long forgotten past of samurai and bushido and the shinobi and the emperors and dynasties of times past in japan when i see something that invokes those kinds of images it is no surprise to me that this knife is a traditional japanese design and if you were to tell me that this was from uh, Ireland, I would be quite shocked. Because this does not look like what I would picture an Irish knife to be. There are some characters on the handle, which I believe are very similar to the ones that we have on this little Higo. Although it seems like they only put a few of them as... Presumably, they didn't want to make the handle too crowded, but you can see similar characters. And if you want me to read those for you, I regret to inform you, I cannot. Um, if, if you want to, I believe there is a translation out there, although I've heard at least two or three different meanings behind this, and they, they seem to contradict one another. So I'm not going to give you any direct opinions because I do not want to give you the wrong information. So, again, I, I trust you to do your own research, for I do not know what this says, but I will say I like it. It's a nice little embellishment, and because these are imprinted in the steel, they're not going anywhere, so you don't have to worry about them fading like a stamp, which I do appreciate. The action on this, I can't really rate the walk and talk. I guess I'd just say that the action is smooth, it's certainly not gritty, it's very, very buttery smooth, just like the, just like the little one, again, no real problems with the action, and definitely not too tight, but certainly not so loose that you'll have to worry about it constantly closing. Speaking of which, there is a bit of a safety feature. The extended tang, put your thumb on the back of the tang here, and it will make it a bit harder for the blade to come down on your hand. So, again, I wouldn't consider this a safety feature, but it's better than nothing. For, again, something like this does not have that, and the blade will just close on your hand. And, of course, I go back to OpenL and say that this is the safest of friction folders because of the Vireblock. And that completely prevents the blade from closing on you. Again, genius invention on Copenhagen's part. 
but yeah, nice mechanism, certainly far from my preferred. I prefer slip joints, and even that's not as safe as, say, a lockback or a liner lock. Um, and this style is not my number one choice. I would not favor this over a slip joint or a lockback. I'm, I prefer a knife with a bit more substance to it, so liners, a spring, bolsters perhaps, but I still appreciate the style with the little rivet here, which again, as you may have heard before, if your Higo is too loose, just give it a tap with a mallet, and that will really prevent the blade from going anywhere. It will kind of tighten it up. So it's, it's essentially the predecessor to knives with a s screw that you can tighten for the pivot. But and there's also this little finger groove here. And you do get a four finger grip on this. My hands are kind of medium sized, so you can judge based on that. Fairly comfortable for a thin knife. But yeah, also you have a lanyard hole, which is very well done, very clean. And now time to talk about the quality. So centering is a little off, as you can see. You can push it back, but it always seems to favor that side. The grind seems okay. I've seen better. Uh, the blade is very sharp. The grinds are even on either side. No blade wrap, of course, because there's no spring to snap against. The action is buttery smooth. The stamp is clear. It's not like there's only half of any of the characters. You can see everything looks nice and tidy. Blade play is almost non-existent. There's a tiny bit of movement, but, you know, you're going to get that when you have a knife with a pivot like this. And really, my only true complaint is that when you open it, you can hear a bit of scraping in there. Now, it doesn't wear away the edge, and honestly, I can't see any scratches. So, all things considered, it is just a cosmetic flaw in the sense that you have to hear that every time you open your knife. But really, that's not the biggest issue. And for a $22 knife, I can absolutely look past it. Again, comfort, the hand, very nice. Steel is fair. I'm sure a lot of my carbon steel lovers are salivating at the mere thought of SK5 steel. I'm, I know it is quite popular. Maybe not blue paper steel or white paper steel, but it's it's considered one of the the nicer of the carbon steels from Japan. Very traditional, very old school. But, yeah. So, that has been my review on the Higo no Kami by Nageo Higo no Kami. Again, I'm probably butchering that name. I apologize, but yeah, uh, this is kind of a re-review, I guess, of this knife. Despite this, they are still very different in their respective ways, but I'm a huge fan of this knife. I think that the style is very traditional. The steel seems fairly good as long as you keep it oiled. The action is smooth. The construction is very simple. Folded sheet metal. Really well done. They offer nicer models with better steels, better materials, and a higher price range. But they offer these in different sizes, so you can find one that's right for you. They're inexpensive, they're basic, they don't look too threatening, and as long as you're willing to take care of them and you appreciate a traditional style, such as a friction folder, you, you should enjoy these. But if you're more of a lockback lover or someone who prefers... Modern knives with modern steel, modern design. I'd recommend you go with maybe a Makusta. They offer, their their Higo is a very modernized variation with all the, the frills of a modern knife. But if you're looking for something traditional uh, and you already have an Open L, or you're like me and you have an excess amount of Open L, 
and you want another friction folder to add to your collection, this is a great choice. I would highly recommend it. Uh, I'm going to put a, I guess, a link or a mention for the Knifeware YouTube channel. Again, that's where I got this knife, and they do some really neat videos on cooking and kitchen knives, particularly Japanese kitchen knives, which is their main selling market. But they did do a very nice video on the Higo no Kami, this particular one, and I highly recommend you give it a watch. Probably more knowledgeable than I am. After all, they're selling them. Uh, I'm just the random guy who bought one and decided to put it on YouTube for my viewers. But nonetheless, yeah, I, I really like this knife. Very fidgety. Friction folders, they can be fun. They're very old, they're very traditional, they have their flaws, but I still think they're very fun. So thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed this knife, I hope you have too. This has been the Higonokami, I believe number three. Uh, SK5 steel, black carbon steel for the handle. Thank you very much for watching, and this has been... The Knife Raven. As always, signing off. Goodbye.